So we deal with the Smith chart for a while, figure out how to use it, realize all its mechanics, and we wonder, okay, what is this thing actually useful for? So it turns out that uh, we can actually use the Smith chart for impedance matching. Um, one of the simplest ways of impedance matching is what's called the single stub tuner. Um, so essentially what you do is you take a piece of transmission line and you attach it to another transmission line, and you make this piece that you've added to the main line um, a certain dimension, length, characteristic impedance or whatever, based on you know how far it is from the load, what exactly it is you want to match. So in this video, I'm going to go over a little bit of the basics uh, and, the, and, and the sort of foundation for the single stub tuner matching process and how we sort of use the Smith chart to determine what our stubs parameters should look like. So just in general, let's go over a little general theory here. <clears throat> the stub itself can actually be an open or short circuit, depending on the application, I guess. Um, section of transmission line. So I'm going to abbreviate that as TL. Um, we're going to say it has a length of stub is going to be, we'll call it D for purposes of uh, this um, set of tutorial videos. Uh, it has a length of D and it is placed at a distance L from the load. And so this is, I mean, we're just kind of setting out a foundation of, you know, what the actual thing is going to be like. So if I were to visually represent this, uh, imagine that this, well, we want a load here, right? So imagine that this thing is a transmission line. Okay, and so you have your positive, negative, whatever, and you have your, this thing here we'll say is ZL. We'll say the characteristic impedance of this line is Z0. And now what we do is we, at this point, uh, this, I guess, is a sort of parallel configuration. Uh, we place a stub here. Okay, and now this is a, it's coming off the main line. That's the thing to note. It's not restricted to the main line itself. And I'll talk about a little later on what the actual physical meaning of this thing is and how it actually works out physically. So, based on our definitions, this distance here is L. And this distance here, well, length, I should call it. That's a length, not a distance, is D. Um, in this case, we call this stub, this stub, the most simplest form of using it is a shorted stub, so that S equals infinity. And so that's, I mean, in the case of a short circuit, we already know from basic transmission line theory that S will equal infinity in that case. Uh, yeah, and I, guess, I suppose we can give this thing a, a characteristic impedance as well. So let's just give it something Z not prime. I mean, it's just it, you know, it's not important in terms of actually using the Smith chart. The, it's just important to realize that they are, all have different impedances. The load uh, ZL and Z not all have different impedances. Let's see. So Z not does not equal Z not prime. Does not equal Z L. Because if they did equal each other, we wouldn't really need to be matching now, would we? Okay, so um, it could have the same, they could be same, they could not be, but I mean, we're going to consider the most complex case always. Uh, you can place this thing in series, but that's usually a little more complicated in terms of the calculation. Um, you can also have a open circuit here, but it's usually not a good idea because at large frequencies, you'll start having radiation because the thing starts to behave as an antenna. Therefore, this sort of short circuit parallel configuration. So this is the short circuit parallel uh, configuration is preferred, is preferred. Okay, so now we need to start looking at what it is that we actually want, or this, this, you know, uh, this, this stub or piece of transmission line to do for us. So um, the purpose of impedance matching is if I call, uh, let's say I call this, and this is on the main line, I should add. This orange line is actually on the main line, OK? And we'll call this Z in, OK? <clears throat> so this impedance 
uh, Z in looking into the load at this point. Uh, we should probably denote this point as point A here. Uh, we want this Z in to be the same as Z naught. So we want the impedance looking into the load should be the same as the impedance of the actual line. Those are the, the conditions for impedance matching uh, no matter where you look. In this case, we apply it to transmission lines. Uh, so now if we get, uh, then, if we look at our normalized impedances, this is going to be Z naught over Z naught, right? Because what we want to do is we want to force Z naught or Z in to be Z naught. And so then this thing is going to be 1. So in the case of a matched line, our normalized impedance will be 1. And by a similar argument, you can say that your input admittance will be also 1. Okay. So how do we actually solve on the Smith chart? So we say using the Smith chart, um, we will have to deal with this number of steps uh, in order to actually plot the specific points of interest uh, unique to the stub configuration and the line that we have. And there is a very uh, sort of mechanical and laid out procedure as to how we can solve this. So as always, we always uh, we usually start by plotting what well, if you've seen the old other any of the other videos, we always plot Z normalized the S circle, um, what else? YL, I guess. YL is of particular impedance, uh, of importance in this case, and we'll get into a little bit uh, into that a little bit later. Um, and then we will also, uh, well, we'll call that the first step, and we'll try to lay this out as simple as possible. So we plot your our S circle, then we plot the R equals one or G equals one circle. So the R equals one or the G equals one circle is actually the circle that passes through the origin. And in later videos where I actually deal with questions like this, I'll highlight that circle in almost every problem that I solve so that you can see which circle I'm talking about. Um, but it's the one that is actually, it runs through the origin on its leftmost side and on the rightmost side of that circle, it runs through the right side of the entire Smith chart. So if this is my Smith chart, the R equals one circle looks something like this. And this point here is the origin. So if you find that circle on your on your Smith chart, that's a that's a very important circle when it comes to solving these kind of problems. Okay. Um now it's important to think uh, to think about what the actual uh, impedance uh, relationship is between these two. Since these two things are in parallel, we're going to deal with admittances. Uh, as you know, if you have admittances uh, and they are in parallel, you can add them directly, and they're simple to work with. So typically when we have parallel circuits, we usually deal with admittances. When we have series circuits, we deal with impedances. Um, and that applies for DC, AC, transmission lines, anything really. So we plot this circle. Um, and so essentially, this uh, what we have is uh, we will have Y in, so your input, your normalized input uh, admittance is going to equal 1 plus JB. Now, B I'm defining as any reactive term. It could be positive, it could be negative, um, and so we will have um, we will have this sort of uh, general case. This will happen. Um, so that's what we have, but, but if we place a stub at Ys equals minus Jb, let's say in this case, and Ys is going to be the actual admittance of the stub itself. And we'll go on and we'll visually look at all this stuff through a number of examples. So we're going to place a stub at Ys equals, uh, well, a stub of Ys equals Jb, I should say, and at point A, uh, then what do we get? 
then we'll get that the input admittance at that point will actually be 1 plus jb minus jb, which is going to end up equaling 1, which is exactly what we wanted um, here. So this is the condition of impedance matching, if you recall. So that is uh, the sort of roadmap. Now I should just point out that b could be positive or negative. And it depends upon which point you take. Uh, could be positive or negative um, for any length less than lambda over two. And then once you get over a greater lambda, greater than lambda over two, it really isn't um, practical because I mean it's going to be the exact same thing repeating over and over again. So here are some sort of variables that we define. We say that at a, now this is a point, A, Ys is going to equal JB, and L is going to equal LA. So we're defining that length as LA. Now at B, we're going to have Ys is going to be minus JB. Uh, and these points, like I said, they, we will look at the, where they occur more in depth in later videos. Right now, I just want to lay a foundation of how we actually approach these kind of problems. Uh, and at this, we're going to say that length is going to equal length b. Um, what else do we have? So we have that the stub is shorted. So how do we find the actual length of the stub? We go, we travel from, so going from uh, PSC, so if you recall, uh, short circuit point on the Smith chart. Well, I shouldn't use SC because it's it might confuse with short circuit. So on the Smith chart, um, so going from PSC to the actual required YS value uh, to the required YS value this should be ys normalized, of course, uh, gives us the length of the stub. Okay, so then we define two points. We define a point A prime. Uh, so and at A prime, um, distance from PSC to A prime it's going to equal dA. Okay, so this is going to be a, a possible length of the stub. Is gonna, we're going to call it dA. So if you go back to the top, we define d. Now there's two points. There's going to be dA and dB, and that's due to the symmetry of the actual circles. And again, like I said, we'll deal with that in specific examples and how these two points actually arise. Then we define a point B prime, and we'll call this the distance from PSC to B prime. We're going to call this thing db. So we have two distances, uh, sorry, we have two lengths that are corresponding to distances on the Smith chart. So essentially what we'll do is we'll start at the short circuit point and we'll travel uh, towards the load from that short circuit point and we will calculate um, the possible length of the stub. So that's it for, well, oh, sorry. Before I do that, I just want to actually point out what this actual thing is, because I know a lot of people have issues visualizing transmission lines. So if you think about a PCB, for example, imagine this is my copper trace, and I don't know, let's say it goes bends down here, and it goes like this and does some bizarre stuff there. And all of a sudden, let's say I stop here, and all of a sudden I have something, and it's connecting there and that's going there and this is going to your I don't know your processor and this is doing that and so you know that goes on but what I'm concerned about is this point here let's say we have a capacitor here this is very simplified so I mean you would never see something like this probably in a in a circuit uh, actually but you know for the sake of argument this is Z in okay uh, and at that point, Z in is going to equal Z C, let's say, where Z C is going to be the impedance of the capacitor. Okay, that it's Z C. But let's say that the characteristic impedance of this thing is Z naught, and we'll say that 
Z naught does not equal Zc. So now how do I solve this problem? I need these impedances to be matched in order to have maximum uh, transfer of my signal or my power. Um, so how does this stub actually work? I mean, here I've drawn it as a sort of, it just it looks kind of strange. It looks like there's two wires here and you have a circuit. It, like it doesn't really make much sense. But the actual uh, parallel circuit interpretation, or well, the how you can interpret this in terms of real stub, is what I would do is I would, let's say, break off this thing here, and all of a sudden I would just create this thing here, and this is a stub now. And so now this thing here would actually be my length D. And I might call, you know, let's say somewhere in the middle, I'll call this point A. And now I can, you know, go from here to here, and I can call this L. And so all of a sudden now what I've done uh, now, looking in to here, all of a sudden, Z in equals Z naught. So any signal that I may have had traveling here will go through without any reflection. So this is the sort of you know application as to what it actually looks like in real life, because I know a lot of students, or a lot of people, when they hear transmission lines, they think of power cables. And they're like, how the hell can you have a power cable uh, stub? It doesn't make sense. So the stub uh, sort of approaches or stub matching techniques are used in, in situations like this, in high frequency uh, circuit design and, and whatnot. So uh, this was a sort of brief foundation video on how we set up these stub matching problems. Uh, in videos to come, we will look at specific examples on how we can actually determine stub length, the distance of the stub from the load, and all these type of important parameters. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so we can get more videos to you as soon as possible. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one.